This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to another video quick tip. In this video, we're talking about oscillations and subtle animations within After Effects. Now, when I say subtle animations, think like leaves blowing in the wind or an ocean wave current, a boat floating and rocking backwards and forwards, birds flapping their wings and flying and like clouds, right? So like subtle animations that you could create by hand with keyframes, but it would take a while to do and be a pain in the butt to do if you had a lot of layers as well as a lot of changes you want to do. So normally if you did want to use keyframes and you want to expedite the process, you could use like loop in loop out expressions, which we'll cover in another tutorial. But in today's video, I want to share with you guys a cool resource I found by my buddy Paul, popularly known as Colonix on the internet and on Twitter. Basically he created a custom function. So instead of using all these math stuff like math sine, math pi, time and frequency, you know, the JavaScript um, trigonometry basically. Um, basically instead of knowing all this stuff, you can kind of just use his custom function and just plug and chug things that you want to do, right? So this is his custom function right here, oscillate. And so you plug in the wave type, there's different wave types like the basic sine wave, cosine, square, triangle, and sawtooth, stuff like that. So basically you define a sine wave or any wave type that you want to use and you plug in the frequency, the amplitude, and what to drive the wave forward, right? So what is the phase, right? So usually we use time, but you can use pretty much any property to drive the wave animation forward. And so I'm going to link this article in the video description down below so you guys can read it. There's a lot of information here that you can learn from. Um, there's some default parameters. And so this is what we're interested in here. This is the code. He was kind enough to include the source code. And so we're going to copy this and take a look at it. Um, but basically, if you want to support Paul and all the work that he does, this is actually a preset available in his mixtape product. So his mixtape is basically a product with all his presets in it. Um, he's known for a lot of really, really useful, handy expressions. So if you want to support him in his work and get all his presets, you can go ahead and purchase his mixtape, which will include this as well. Um, so many thanks to Paul here. Um, I had this new unreleased tool that's coming out very, very, very soon as in next week. And so I'm going to use it to kind of show you guys the expression in a larger screen here. Um, this is power kit. And basically it's kind of like a scratch pad for advanced and developer users in after effects. There's a lot of functions here, but one of them is kind of like the scratch pad that you can kind of use. And so I'm going to go ahead and hop into my tutorial comp here. So we're going to briefly kind of skim through it. So basically this is the function. He's defining the function oscillate, right? There are some default values, right? So if there, so if there's no first argument, the default argument is sine for the wave type. Frequency and amplitude are defaulted to one if there's no default, if there's no input parameter. And by default, we're using the time to drive the phase. And so we're going to convert the parameters, the sine parameter, to all lowercase. And we're going to pretty much try these cases right here. So if it's a sine wave, it's using this math function right here. If, you, if it's cosine, we're using this function right here. If we're using a square wave, he's basically clamping everything here and so on and so forth. So this is the magic right here. And it's going to catch any errors and return false if things go to crap, basically. Um, and so this is just defining the function, right? But if you actually wanted to use it, we need to actually call the function. So add a few spaces, type in the actual name of the function. I'm going to copy it right here. Comments are useful. So we're going to call the function oscillate. The first parameter, I'm going to add a semicolon at the very end right here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what's going on. Now, the first parameter here is the wave type. So you could just type it in like the sine wave, type in sine or whatever in, in quotes. I'm going to type in one because that's the default parameter for sine, I believe. So one means, means we're using a sine wave. The default frequency, let's just go ahead and put it to something dramatic like one for now. And amplitude, I'm going to set it to like 300, just so you can kind of see what's going on. So frequency is how frequently is, a, is the, the wave going to cycle through per second. And the amplitude is basically by how much, how much are we oscillating by? How much are we varying the number by? And the last parameter is the driving parameter, right? So how are we going to drive this? So by default, we're going to use time, which is the time indicator right here. So wherever we are in time, that's going to be used to drive the oscillation here. So something like this, just kind of keep this in mind. So let's actually use this thing. So I have a boat right here. And basically right now, it's just chilling, right? It's chilling, the ocean is moving, but the boat's just chilling. It's not really doing anything. 
And so I would like to add some subtle, you know, up and down kind of floating, imitating movement that like it's simulating floating. And so what I did was I go to position and I right clicked and separated the dimensions, right? And so now we have access to the boats, the Y position right here. This is what I'm interested in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do Alt or Option click to enable expressions and go ahead and paste your expression in here. Uh, with my tool power kit, you can just go ahead and just enter it in. And so by default, you're gonna see that, hey, look, our boat is actually oscillating up and down. And this is great, but you're gonna see one problem here. This right here is telling us what the value is for the Y position, but it's not taking into consideration what the initial value was, right? So before I pasted the expression in, um, it was kind of at the right position. So what I want instead is say like, yo, you know, I want you to oscillate, but keep in mind the original value, right? So whatever value this was, whatever Y position value it was, keep that, but add the oscillation in, right? So once I do that, update the expression. And again, you can just paste it and edit into the expression right here. Just go ahead and go in here and edit the expression. Um, I'm just doing it for video purposes in this larger window right here. But now you're gonna see that, hey, it's in its right position and it's oscillating up and down. And as you can see, 300 is way too much. So we're gonna tone down the oscillation to like 0.6. And then we're gonna change the amplitude to something like 50 or so, and then update it. And so now you're gonna see that our boat is using a sine wave and it's you know animating up and down to kind of simulate a floating look. And you can apply this to a lot of things, not just like static Y position, you know? So I have a sail right here and it's just chilling as well. It's not really animating, it's not animating to win. And we can fake it by going into the sail itself under transform and rotation, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the rotation and add the same exact expression to this parameter, this rotation for the sail. And you're gonna see that now the sail is actually, you know, rotating along its anchor point and things are actually animating. Now, obviously 50 is too much for rotation. This should be more like five and the frequency should be more like 4.4 or so go ahead and update that. And so now if I go ahead and kind of scrub through it, not only is the boat moving up and down, but now the sail is kind of rocking its rotation as well. And you can apply the same movement, the same motion to a lot of things and add that kind of a looping type oscillating animation to a lot of things, trees, leaves, things, stuff like that. And feel free to modify the expression. I mean, it's all here, it's all transparent. You can modify and tweak it to however you want. And I highly encourage it. So in the original demonstration, I used it for the birds flapping their wings. I used it on the clouds moving and a lot of other things like that. So pretty cool and versatile stuff here. Now, before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a low one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 25 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it for this quick tip, guys. Mad props to Paul again for providing the expressions. He's a great guy. So if you want to support his stuff, buy his mixtape product to get all his presets. Um, this has just been a really quick tutorial on kind of kind of add some subtle, quick animations to your projects. You can go ahead and save this expression as a preset or save it in a notepad or whatever. Um, Power Kit will be out soon, probably next week. And I'll also be releasing a new preset to generate these nice little clouds right here. Um, these clouds are created by my preset as well as the shadow right here. So pretty cool stuff. Check it out over at creativedojo.net. If you guys like this kind of videos or you want more of these type of videos, go ahead and leave a comment down below telling me so. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. So my name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.